So I keep trying to think of different ways to start a video, like with some pizzazz. And I keep coming back to this idea of maybe if I just like pull down, like pull. Hey, hey, I'm Josh. I'm a developer advocate here at Zeppelin. This is the third video in our series on using the Zeppelin JavaScript SDK. And together we'll build a little command line app with Node to help download all of your project assets in Zeppelin. So as a developer working in Zeppelin, I can inspect a screen and download an individual asset from that screen or download all the assets altogether for that screen. This workflow is generally fine because when I'm working on a front end, I'm working on just one screen or one component at a time that requires that asset. But there's some developers out there who would prefer to grab everything for the entire project in one go. And we're going to be showing you how to leverage Zeppelin's API and JavaScript SDK to do just that. So if this is your first time seeing me and haven't used a Zeppelin API before, Make sure to check out our first video in this series to learn how to get your personal access token for the API and get everything set up. But if you're already good to go there, then we'll get started with going over the other node packages that we'll be using today. First, you'll need Axios for our HTTP request handler. Zeppelin's JavaScript SDK actually uses Axios already behind the scenes, but we're going to supply the SDK with a custom handler that uses Axios rate limit to help make sure we throttle the requests a bit. The rate limit for requests to the Zeppelin API is 200 requests per minute per user, so if you're working with a big project with a lot of screens and assets, then adding this custom HTTP request handler with rate limiting built in will ensure that you don't get blocked by the rate limits. Downloading and writing so many files at a time can be taxing on your system, so similar to rate limiting, we'll be using the plimit library to manage the number of concurrent downloads. And as we're downloading all of those assets, we'll want to get a visual representation of our progress with a nice little progress bar, so we'll use a handy library appropriately called Progress. And maybe you don't want all of the assets, maybe you just want some of the SVGs or the PNG assets only, and we can give our app some extra options like that using Commander. And last but certainly not least, we'll use .env to help safely store our personal access token and any other environment variables you might need. So taking it into our code editor, I've already imported the packages that I've just mentioned. And I've also imported Node's built-in FS module to handle our file system operations for downloading the assets or creating directories. And here we've retrieved our personal access token as an environment variable from our .env file. And then we'll get our command line program started with const program equals new command. So if you're working on a big project with a lot of assets, we can implement some simple rate limiting here since the rate limit for Zeppelin's API is 200 requests per minute per user, as I mentioned before. We'll get an instance of Axios rate limit going here and pass in axios.create. And I've set my options here for the max number of requests to be 200 every 60,000 milliseconds or one minute. And then we'll fire up the Zeppelin SDK here, passing in a new configuration with our access token. The second argument can be undefined and HTTP, our new rate limit handler will be our third argument. The process for downloading all project assets with the Zeppelin API consists of three main steps. First, getting an array of screens with their IDs from the project using the get project screens endpoint. And the screen data from this endpoint does not contain any data about the assets. So we'll iterate through the list of IDs that we retrieved from there and query the get latest screen version endpoint. And that will have the data for the assets and the asset URL from Zeppelin CDN. And the last step would be for our script to create a folder for each screen and download all the assets into it. Now, real easy here, we'll get our project screens with an async function I'll call get project screens and pass in the project ID. We'll get our data from await zeppelin.screens.get project screens, passing in that project ID for the endpoint from the SDK. And we'll start setting up our program next for commander, which will need a required option to get the ID that we're going to eventually pass into that get project screens function. The parameters for the required option are a string with the short form flag we'll use dash p for project ID and the long form dash dash project ID. And then you'll put your variable that you'll use in the angled brackets. And lastly, a string for the description of that flag. So when you run your app and type dash dash help, it'll show that description. So we can start adding our other options here. Uh, one will be a folder or directory, and we can just set a default here as well, which can be the third argument for this option method. I'll call it output. And then for our last option, we'll need an array of the file types that Zeppelin supports for the assets. So the ellipsis here will indicate that it's going to be an array. And then as the default options again in the third argument, we'll list out all the file types that Zeppelin supports. So if the user of this app does not select any options, then all file types will be downloaded. 
I mentioned that the second argument in all of our option methods are going to be used for when you type dash dash help. So let's just try that real quick. I'll type in node download project assets, the name of our file, and dash dash help. Great, and there we see our project ID, output directory, and the defaults, uh, and form asset download, which is the list of all the asset types that we can use with Zeppelin. After we've defined all the options, we'll define the action of this program. And I know I'm kind of breezing through our usage of Commander here, but I'll definitely recommend checking out their docs to see how robust and super helpful it is. Now in our action, we can make an async function passing in the variables that are the options that we defined using their long form syntax. And to start off, let's just console log our projects, then call program.parse, which will evaluate all the options you've given it and run the action. We'll try node download project assets again. And type dash P for the project ID, and I'll get that from Zeppelin here in my address bar. This last number, I'll just copy it and paste it here. All right, looks good. I can see that this returns an array of our screens here. Make this a little bigger. And we've got some useful information like the ID and the name, and of course the URL that we'll need to access later for downloading. We've got that for all of our uh, assets here. And our next step is to get the asset list for each screen, which is available on the get latest screen version endpoint. So we'll create a function called get asset data and take in the parameters for the screen itself, the project ID, and the list of formats from our options we defined earlier in the commander. We can go ahead and destructure the ID and name property from the screen and also set our data property from the API's return by destructuring that too and use the SDK method for screens.getLatestScreen version, passing in the project ID and the screen ID. The array of assets here need to be flattened, and then we'll destructure these properties for display name and the contents property. And then we'll want to apply our filter here so that we can just create a new array for that called filtered contents. That's where we'll just check if the content format is in the list of formats that we've already passed into the get asset data function. Make sure to check out Zeppelin's API reference for more information on how the data is structured here, or until then, you, I guess you'll just have to trust me. When it comes to creating our folder structure for these assets to live in, we'll want to create a folder named the same thing as a screen name. So for example, I have a screen called keyscreen1-login, and we'll want to name our folder that so that all the assets for that screen can be organized nicely. But sometimes asset names will contain a forward slash character, and when we use the FS module later to create directories, FS will interpret that as a nested directory. So we should just replace all those slashes with dashes by renaming our file here with the replace all method. And it'll also be helpful to append the density to the file name here for organization too. So if you're not sure what I mean by density, check out Zeppelin's Help Center to learn more about how to work with your designer on setting up the correct density for your Zeppelin project. So that's pretty much the hardest part of all this and it wasn't so bad. So we can get back to the action here. And by that, I mean, the action method of our program. So the function we just wrote is getting assets for a single screen. So we can collect all the assets for all screens. Let's just call this variable assets. And in promise.all, we'll map over the project screens array to get the asset data for each of those screens, passing in the screen object itself, the project ID, and the list of formats from our options. Oh, and this will need to be uh, flattened here since an array of nested arrays for each screen. So we'll add dot flat. So each asset in our flattened array will have a URL property that we use for downloading from Zeppelin CDN. So we can start on that functionality now with a new function called download asset. We'll pass in the asset object and destructure right in line here for the screen name, URL, and the file name. And also we want to know the parent directory that's from our commander option earlier. And in a try catch, we'll await for Axios to get the URL and set the response type to stream. Then call on FS to make the directory with the parent directory name and the screen name as the child folder. Then call on FS again to write the file using the file name and the data that Axios just returned as the source for the file. And in case of any errors, we can just add a simple catch right here. All right, home stretch. So we'll go back to our action method in the program, then create the parent directory from our options with the FS module. And before that, we'll actually remove it so that your script starts fresh every time. Then we use the plimit library to manage concurrency because it can get really taxing on your system to be creating so many files at the same time. 
So we'll limit it to 20 to start. And then in a variable I'll call download asset promises. I map over our list of assets, passing in that download asset function to a limited promise instance. Okay, moment of truth. We'll run this and see that our assets are being downloaded for each screen. I'll try running this again with the same project ID we used before and see that we created a folder called output and all of our assets will be downloaded for each screen into there. There we go. Folder called outputs. New folders being created for each screen. We can see that all the assets have been populated here too. All right, that's nice. But what would make it even nicer is knowing where we are in the process of downloading. So I'll create a progress bar here called the assets bar and the label can just say downloading project assets and then add in any other tokens prefixed with the colon like the bar itself the download rate, percentage, and time left as ETA. Then we'll add an object of options. So that would be the characters we want to use for the complete and incomplete symbols on our progress bar. And the width, which we can set to 20. And progress needs to know where the total reference is to calculate a percentage. So that's just going to be the length of our entire asset list. So we'll pass in this assets bar into our download asset function call. And then back here in our download asset function itself, we'll pass this in as progress. And we want to make sure we hit progress.tick right here. So now let's try it again. This time we'll specify the directory to download it in. I'll call it assets. And the formats I want to use are only SVG and PNG. So I'll specify that here as well. And we can see our progress bar running here. And our assets folder was just created. And we've got all of our SVG and PNG assets from, from the project. And that'll do it. Thanks for joining me on today's adventures with Zeppelin's JavaScript SDK. You can find this code and other helpful scripts like this on our Zeppelin community GitHub repo. I've linked to that in the description. And we'd love to hear about what you're building with the Zeppelin API. So come join us on Discord where you can find me and other Zeppliners. See you later.